I met Norman in um, in uh, the Cass Gallery, um, and um, they were doing an exhibition on Elena's project of the book on Chiyida. That day when I met Norman in in the gallery was basically he'd come with Elena to see how the installation was going, and um, he explained to me there was something we were doing with these boards that were um, sort of offset from the wall and. Um, and also how we were going to display the, this special book in the window. And he just suggested some ideas to me. And, uh, and uh, they sounded really good. And I thought, OK, I'll get on Monday, I'll start working on that. And on Monday morning, as soon as I got into the office, I received a fax from Norman with a um, really perfect drawing of what he meant by which were very, very, very simple, but beautifully drawn and, you know, resolve the issue straight away. So that was my first meeting with Norman, I'd say. I was about 12 years old and my father was working for Willis Faber in London. And the building of Willis Faber in London is very, is a neoclassical building. And he once said to me that he was invited uh, to see the new building in Ipswich. But at that time I had no idea about architecture or anything like that but he came back telling me that he was he went to this new building of the company that he was working for and he was really amazed he came back totally amazed with what he saw and he told me like it was all about this building that he thought was incredible because it had all the it had all these things that were not common in in those days and completely different to the building that he was in, which was a very grand neoclassical building in Tower Hill. And, um, and it stuck with me, my father talking about this futurist building, basically. And I never, and it left it there, but he did capture my imagination, just the way that he described it. Um, for me, symbolically and for what it stands and everything and the real representation is, would be the Sainsbury Centre because that was a real combination of things coming together, I think architecturally, conceptually, and that that happened for an art centre in this country at that time, I think that was really groundbreaking and it still stood the test of time, it still looks great. Um, and I, I think that's a great reference. I think it's, uh, it's had a, an incredible impact um, and it's been a great example of architecture that really, really works. I mean, the, certainly the ones that I most know in London, um, they're just all very, incredibly varied and you know amazing um they're real milestones you know they really stand out they're iconic and they represent the, the city so you know everything from stansted airport uh, canary wharf um, uh, the millennium bridge uh, saint mary axe all these buildings are, are truly uh, beautiful statements and and really really work for their purpose and great solutions and, uh, you know, with the planning of Trafalgar Square, it's a very, very special um, intervention that he did, um, that he makes it look very easy, but it's actually, it's not as easy as it looks. And I think that's the secret. Oh, well, it's very important. I mean, um, uh, it's a beautiful way of really keeping alive his way of thinking and doing things, um, which I, I don't know anything like that. It goes into s where from his sketches goes through to process and then the final thing. And um, it's, it's a very beautiful thing to, to, to keep showing and people to, to see. Um, they're fantastic ideas that begin in a very basic, simple way, but they're very well thought through. So and be beautifully explained. So that's, for me, the secret is seeing all the process and people to see it and 
really see it, not just the final picture.